You lie down facing the scorching sun in the middle of the desert, when suddenly you smell something extremely foul. You try to crawl to the source to see if maybe someone there can help you, but all you see is a large hole in the middle of nowhere. You crawl there and stick your head down the hole. You hear something really faint down there, but it's too dark to see anything. Still, the foul smell tickles your nostrils. You turn away in disgust and stand up to get a better view of it. The hole is roughly 100 feet in diameter, with nothing around it. You've been wandering around the desert for days and just ran out of food and water. But far away, you see what looks like a small hut. You walk there for another couple of hours until you reach the outskirts of a village. A local man riding a camel tells you that you're in the Al Mara province in Yemen's eastern region, which is quite close to Oman. He immediately takes you to his mud hut, feeds you, and gives you some water. Feeling refreshed and full, you ask the local about the hole in the desert floor. His eyes sink in and his face grows pale. He grabs you by your sleeve in silence, throws you out of his hut, and slams the door shut. You try to knock on his door once more, but he ignores you. Out ahead is the village market, where you could surely get some answers from people. You head over there, and everyone starts staring at you as if you're some kind of threat. They sense something's off about you. You put on your hood and make your way to a merchant. While you purchase some food, you ask the seller about the hole, but he refuses to sell you anything. He even pushes you off to the pathway. You make your way to another vendor and ask about the hole. At first, he's reluctant to tell you anything, but after you buy a few items from his shop, he finally concedes. He takes you to a small inn and seats you down. He tells you to keep your voice low when talking about it. He then orders a beverage for you and begins explaining everything he knows about the hole. Legends have it that the well of Barhut, which is in Hadramaut, is a cursed place, a prison for spirits. He claims that any object that goes near it eventually disappears. The server comes back with two refreshing drinks, and the man quickly stops talking. As soon as the server leaves, he resumes telling you about the well. The reason why people were avoiding you when you mentioned the well was because it's believed that it brought bad luck to anyone who was near it. They were even able to feel it through you. The man tells you that he doesn't believe in such superstitions, but you want to find out more. At night, you head back to the well to find out if what he said was true. You sit down next to it and concentrate all your senses. It's quiet, nothing but the desert wind brushing against the sand. You hear something that sounds like a whisper coming from the hole, as if calling you to go inside. You get up from your meditation and walk towards the hole. The sound gets louder, but you still can't make anything of it. You stick your head down the hole to listen while holding your breath, but it just sounds like gibberish. The next day, you get some rope and pikes and wait till nightfall to prepare for the next step, descending down the hole. Nighttime comes again, and you set up the ropes and tie them around a tree. You climb down while holding the rope with one hand and a torch with the other, and scale down. You try to breathe through your mouth, but you start to feel like you need to catch deeper breaths the lower you go. The hole is believed to be around 850 feet deep, but you were only able to go down around 20. You didn't expect it to be that deep. You start climbing back up, but you decide to drop the torch into the hole to see how far it goes. You see the flame getting smaller and smaller as it disappears into the darkness. Maybe the man was right, just village folklore about something they can't explain. Scientists claim that the hole is millions of years old and has practically no ventilation. Even though it's been around for such a long time, it remains as mysterious today as it's always been. You're walking in Siberia, looking out for some reindeer, when suddenly you hear a loud explosion from the distance. All of your reindeer scatter around, and you're too much in a frenzy to collect them. You run to the source of the blast and find a huge crater in an area you just passed through. In August 2020, a massive hole was discovered in Siberia, Russia, being around 100 feet deep and around 65 feet wide. The local residents and researchers were stunned to find it there. 
This is the ninth hole documented in the region since 2013. You call the local authorities and a huge team of scientists arrive with weird looking scientific equipment. They claim this crater is the biggest one they've seen so far. Most of these craters were found by accident when people went on non-scientific outings by helicopter or by hunters and herders. Scientists aren't able to wrap their heads around it, but they knew exactly where to start. Permafrost, the thing that covers two-thirds of the whole country's territory. Scientists believe that by studying the permafrost, which contains certain chemicals, we can find out why these craters are popping out. Samples of the craters contain a lot of chemicals, but most notably, methane. Scientists took plenty of samples of the frozen soil from the ground and the ice. They had to descend down the crater to collect most of them. And within two years, these craters end up turning into lakes. According to their studies, the gases, which are mainly made up of methane, accumulate in the upper layers of the permafrost. And they can come both from the deep layers of the earth and those close to the surface. These gases end up getting trapped in the frost as they accumulate, creating enough pressure to burst through the frozen ground. They claim that these giant holes are a result of the growing temperatures. But that's just one theory. They're still not really sure how they could have formed. But because most of these craters form in remote areas of the Arctic and take years to shape, no one really talks about them. You're fast asleep in the city of Fukuoka, Japan. At around 5 a.m., you hear a loud explosion and feel the ground shake. Japan is prone to earthquakes and tsunamis, so you're prepared for the worst. But the ground isn't rumbling and the building isn't shaking anymore. You check the power and nothing. The whole apartment and neighborhood is completely dark. You look far out from the balcony and see a huge hole in the middle of a five-lane road. You leave the building and join the crowd gathering outside. The hole is about 65 feet deep and it swallowed everything around it. The traffic lights, sidewalks, and a bus stop are all gone. Even parts of buildings are destroyed, leaving the support beams still standing. The whole subway system is totally dysfunctional and about 800 households are experiencing blackouts. Even the airport and subway had a bit of it. The local authorities evacuate the entire area in case more sinkholes or gas explosions occur. A few days later, it's all fixed. It only took the Japanese engineers and contractors 48 hours to fill it up and a week to reopen the road to the public. The explosion might have been caused by some construction on a subway line, but the sinkhole is sinking again. People noticed that the road seemed to decline by about three inches in heavy traffic. But with quick maintenance, Japan can fix anything in the fastest way possible.